Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers, it's Kush back at again with another New York Giants video. Hasn't been much to update, you know, much of the same for the entire month of April and kind of like towards even the month of March. There just isn't much news going on, both in the NFL and with the New York Giants. You know, once again, after a crazy beginning to the offseason, things calm down a lot. And now here we are nine days away from the NFL draft officially in single digits. Um, Is there a player in Giants history that wore number nine? Did Riley Dixon wear number nine? We are Riley Dixon days away from the NFL draft. Man, listen, whatever the case is, I'm here to talk to you guys about the mid rounds of the NFL draft today. The Giants, as you already know, have five picks in the top 100. Myself other giants content creators youtubes and basically every giants fans have talked to death about the fifth and seventh overall pick so i'm here to talk about the other three top picks in the um top 100 that's 36 87 and 61 i believe 36 61 and 87 somewhere around the way, uh there one in the second round two in the third round and even our fourth round pick it's a very very early fourth rounder so maybe you want to count that as like a top mid-round pick as well. But before I get into it, there is a small little update that kind of, you know, leads into the transition of it. That's numbers have been released for the free agents that we signed officially. I'm going to try and run through these very quickly. We got 64 for Mark Lewinsky. Uh, and of course, there's an ad. 55 for Jihad Ward. Tyra Taylor is going to be wearing two. James Gillian or Jamie Gillian, I mean, is going to be wearing 17. Jameel Douglas is going to be wearing 77. Antonio Williams is going to be wearing 21. Ricky Seals Jones is going to be wearing 83. Uh, Roy Mother Baker, I might be completely butchering that name, is going to be wearing 61. Austin Pro is going to be wearing 87. Matt Gano is going to be wearing 73. Richie James is going to be wearing 80. Robert Foster, 82. Max Garcia, 72. John Feliciano, 76. Davis Webb, 12. Dustin Ellis, uh, 71. And Matt Breida, 31. Now, the reason I say this leads into the mid-round picks is because there's one of them that probably should have caught y'all attention, and that's Antonio Williams wearing 21. Uh, so 21, Antonio Williams, obviously taking the number of former Giants player has been here for the past two years, Jabril Peppers. Uh, Peppers, of course, signed with the New England Patriots a couple weeks ago. I didn't. I don't think I really reported on it. It didn't really come out as big news because it didn't look like we we're going to bring him back anyway. But we are officially out in terms of the safety room of the two vets that we had there in Logan Ryan and Jabril Peppers. Right now, it is Xavier McKinney. It is Julian Love. And I believe that is it. Um, of course, there's going to be players that's going to be, you know, doubling there, much like Love doubles as a corner and as a safety. I expect Aaron Robinson probably to be saying to be seeing some safety play uh, this year and whatnot. And of course, I'm happy for Jabril Peppers. I wish him nothing but the best. I love Jabril Peppers, just like I love Lo Rogan, Logan Ryan. They were great people as well as great players for us and brought a, just a certain type of energy and vibe to the team that brought everybody together in the locker room especially that secondary um part of me wants or part of me i should say hesitates to think that maybe there's a little bit of chemistry lost there but we'll see how it goes you know these are professional players they probably realize this part of the business and whatnot but like i said it leads into the mid rounds because the safety position is now something realistically speaking that the giants could look to pick up in the mid rounds now this of course depends on all how all about how those first two first round pick plays out but in a scenario just to make things not complicated real quick where the giants do get an offensive tackle to be their right tackle and they do get an edge rusher in the first round that second round pick you're looking at people like daxton hill you're looking at people like lewis seen who's another name that sort of climbed up the boards a little bit out of georgia jaquan brisker out of penn state and uh jalen petrie out of baylor these are really the next safeties up after kyle hamilton of course who a lot of people consider the best player in the draft let alone the best safety but those are the next safeties up that you'd probably be considering with that second round pick now would i be somebody that takes a safety in the second round not necessarily but i wouldn't really be mad angry or disappointed no negative feelings if the giants do make that decision right i mean 
we did get Xavier McKinney, who was supposed to be a first round pick in the second round. So I don't see it happening, right? Like this is not going to happen. But if Kyle Hamilton drops to the second round, not happening. Of course, I'll be happy if we take him. If Daxton Hill, somebody that could legitimately go in the first round, in my opinion, if he goes, I mean, if he slips into the second, I wouldn't be mad about taking him there either. The, but the thing that I'm looking at, the thing I'm considering, of course, is um, especially if you guys have watched my streams, you know how I kind of want this draft to go, a skeleton framework of it. I'm really looking towards like a linebacker in the second round because I think the linebacker group is probably going to start going there and you'd want to get them either with that pick 36 or with that first third round pick that we have, right? And then, of course, if we get somebody like a Ahmad Sauce Gardner with the seventh overall pick, that alone strengthens the secondary a lot more. Of course, it doesn't it doesn't mean anything for the safety group um, directly, but indirectly. Remember how I mentioned I could see um, Robinson playing that safety role a bit more. If we get somebody like Sauce, I'll definitely lean into that thought a little bit more. Maybe they feel like okay, he's a bit more. I'm not sure what the term is. I was about to say expendable, but it's not correct in this context. But it would make more sense to use him then, you know, split him, split his uh, snaps between safety and corner versus if we didn't have somebody taking that uh, number one spot, right? Darnay Holmes as well uh, is still there. Like, we still have a couple corners in this cornerback room that if the situation arises where we actually take a corner with a high pick, whether it's Sauce, Stingley, and, you know, people are even saying Andrew Booth, maybe if he slips in the second round, McDuffie, if he slips in the second round, if we get one of those one of our existing corners could double at safety. We've seen it a lot in the past couple of years. But it begs the question, honestly, of do we even need to take a safety in this draft, right? Obviously, we can. We have, what is it, 9 or 10 picks total? I could be 100%, you know, overestimating there. But we have a lot of picks, right? For some reason, the number is not in my head. So we definitely, definitely could take one. It's just that, is it necessary, Right. And in my opinion, this is just personal opinion, so I'd definitely love to have a little bit of a conversation um, about this topic in the comments down below with you guys. I think no. I, I say we have a star safety on the team, and, and that's enough. And, and let me explain myself before you guys kind of kill me in the comments section. What I mean by that is I feel like at the safety position, as long as you have one player performing at the high level, you don't necessarily need the other one to be anything but above average like you could have an average maybe even slightly below average safety playing opposite of your star safety and you'll be fine like and you've seen this in the nfl a lot like where have you seen in nfl history actually i'm trying to think of it where a team has two star safeties and that's why when even before you know when i was talking about cal hamilton and stuff that's why i never wanted cal hamilton at five or seven and i still don't want cal hamilton at five or seven and that's why I don't want to take a safety in the second round or even a third round or even maybe until the fourth round. You know what I'm saying? Like we have other priorities to fill out. Just look at recent Giants history. Remember when Atlanta Collins in 2016 had that defensive player of the year-esque um, type of year when he was supposed to win it over Khalil Mack, in my opinion. I'll, I'm still a little salty over that. The safety that was playing next to him, I believe, was Andrew Adams. And Andrew Adams was, you know, no disrespect intended. You know, he was a good guy for us, but he was very much like an average, maybe below average free safety for the New York Giants. He's a guy that right now I think is with Tampa Bay as a depth chart type guy. He's I don't think he's a starter. <laughs> so when I'm looking at this and I see we have Xavier McKinney, somebody that could potentially break out and be a superstar in this league. I'm just like, just have somebody to be there in the other spot. Obviously, don't have like a 2017 type of safety group where the 2017 secondary New York Giants probably one of the worst in history. But just have somebody that can do the basics over there. And, you know, McKinney could take care of the rest, as crazy as that sounds, and use these other picks on positions where you can't afford to have people like that, like linebacker, like the fact that we probably need another wide receiver, like the fact that we definitely need a tight end, like the fact that we definitely need more defensive tackle depth. And then probably I think about taking a safety. You know what I mean? But you guys put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Just something that popped in my mind. And I wanted to talk about these mid rounds anyway. Because like I said, we've been killing the first two picks for so long. And we're nine days away. Why not? Not much to talk about. Put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe. And I'm out. Hey guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe. 
and I'm out.